Uh, here is David Pribot and Rhonda from the website team and uh, www.debian.org, it's alive. Thank you. So, um, thanks for coming and I want to talk to you about the website, so www.debian.org. Yeah. Don't... Uh, there are many, actually, there are many website stuff on Debian, uh, the wiki, uh, many others, and this one is the first contact point, especially for our users, and it contains also many documentation for us, and many links, of course, to the other services. And um, what it is? Well, kind of kind of a big stuff actually, because it used to be uh, everything on www.debian.org. For example, um, yeah, let's start with some numbers. So there are a huge number of pages. Uh, these pages, uh, 5,000 and 500, are only the first language pages, mostly in English, for most of them. Only a few pages um, have the first language in French, where um, it is about the French international, French localization group. <laughs> Easier to say localization than the other word. Um, there is not only French because there are 36 languages available: um, Japanese, German, uh, and uh, Spanish, and 35 others again. So, with all these um, translations, we have almost 30,000 pages on the website. So, not every page are translated in every language, but uh, some languages are translated from 95% of the website, and a few languages have only one page translated. So, it's really different. I think uh, the Spanish is about 45%, so it's very good, and it can be improved again. <laughs> so um, it's kind of a big stuff. Yeah, there have been around 100,000 100, commits, and sorry, just recently. yes, and we just recently uh, arrived. Yes, we just recently passed the mark of 100,000 commits. I think it goes back to 1994, if I'm not completely wrong. So uh, every commit since then is stored in CVS. Yes, and we are going to talk about CVS soon. There have been around uh, 200, actually 300 contributors. 200 is the number of the current contributors on the, of the website, but there have been around 100 more contributors that are not playing with us anymore. And uh, it makes it like a kind of a big project and quite scary actually to when you first come in. So, like Rhonda said, um, it begins in 1994, something like that. And it has been used in a and it's still in WML sources. WML is kind of HTML with Perl stuff around. There are WML typical commands, but uh, many of us don't even know how to do codes in WML, so we use some uh, hooks to do uh, what we want to do in Perl, but other languages can be used. Uh, we have some Python script on the website for a few pages. And everything is done in a CVS repository. Well, after the few talks, uh, the two precedent, two precedent talks, yeah, we are kind of uh, the old guys in Debian that are still using CVS. But it's not that bad. I'll be back to that in, the, in two slides. It's built uh, every four hours. Um, so if you add uh, a page, if you 
fix a page, if you add a new translation, it will be available in more or less two, three hours. If you're lucky, less. If you're unlucky, it can be five hours. And some of these pages are actually automatically rebuilt, like, for example, the WNPP pages um, that are, uh, are picked from the Deb Debian bug tracker, the BTS, to have uh, up-to-date data offered on the static pages. So it's quite easy to, to see. Uh, there are no JavaScript or PHP um, stuff around. Everything static. We, in order to have the website up to date, we have a translation. <coughs> excuse me, sorry. We have a translation check on every page to be sure that the translation is either up to date. If it is not up to date, it is shown to our users, and we can mail our translators to say, "Hey, oh, you have a translation to update." So we can follow every single pages of the website. And we also do um, daily validations run to make sure that every pages are correct. And if they are not, the people that are responsible of the language, actually, can are aware that there is something to do. And behind this. Uh, it looks like uh, an old stuff, but it really is up to date because some of the documentation, for example, built from the DDP, um, packages that are built from the DDP, um, the man new maintainer guide, the release notes. So those kind of documentation are already built at their last versions. And some other, like the Debian policy, the Debian reference, developer reference, for sure, is extracted from the package. So when a new package arrives, the policy, last up-to-date policy, is displayed, displayed on the website. It doesn't need any end, so it works. Well, the website with these 5,000 and counting pages, um, Actually, in many different directories. <laughs> For example, bugs contains the BTS documentation. CD, distrib, and releases contains, in many different places, lots of information about our CD. Um, and one of the to do, one of the things we, we want to Mac is take together all, the, all of those pages to make it more useful for our users. And recently, we, we gave uh, with notice Steve Sledge uh, commit access, so he can help us. <laughs> Maybe we'll see that uh, later. And uh, I didn't list everything, but the things that are quite moving are the events and news parts, because when there is a new Debian project news that happens every two weeks, we add this page on the website. There are some other press releases, like we have done already some during DebConf and DebCamp. And the security, the security part is also moving because every Almost every day we have a new DSA and a new page on the website that can be translated and that is usually translated currently in uh, Danish, Japanese, and French. Maybe updated quite often. And lots of other pages that we are taking care of thanks to the help of uh, many contributors. For example, in the, sorry, in the ports part, uh, Samuel uh, Thibault is taking care a lot of the herd port and is often updating the related pages. Thanks. 
So why CVS? Uh, why didn't we move away from CVS? Well, first, it works. And it works fine for what we do with it. It works fine because actually we don't have uh, huge requ requirements. We don't want to do uh, crazy revert, remerge, branches. All we do is online. And using CVS, well, maybe you don't remember, but it's not that hard. You do an update, you edit your file, you, you make a diff just to see what are you really changing, just to make sure you didn't make any mistake. And you commit the file. It's quite straight. There's no rebars, remerge. Uh, and actually, it is for non-technical um, contributors. It can be quite an easier workflow than uh, one with Git, but we are, we're working on it too. And actually, there is another thing we are using from CVS, is the translation check is directly linked to the CVS version. When we add a new version in English, for example, one file that is 1.10, you update this file, it becomes 1.11, and every translation that, has, that is up to date with the 1.10 uh, English version, that's crazy, I can't even explain that. It's easy stuff. Um, can you try it, please? Um, yeah, we note down in the translation check header of the files which was the last translated CVS version and given that CVS versions when you commit a new file just increase by a number of one you can easily calculate how many commits you are behind with your translation and see easily you're behind three commits there's so many things to translate and keep up to date to make the file current again Thanks. So, what we did recently, you may remember how all the, the website looked like before. So, this one. Yeah. So, two years ago, we had a, a website and Ten years before, it was quite the same website, actually. <laughs> so, we had a... Um, we thought, um, oh, it, it looks rusty. It looks like there's some dust about it, some dust on top of it. And so, when the squeeze was released, we make it, uh, yeah, let's do it. And we finally managed to talk, talk, maybe to do some new stuff about it. Uh, we changed, we changed uh, kind of a lot of stuff. You may remember it because we, yeah, we had lots of uh, messages about it. Oh, oh, you did something. Oh, it's not dead. And yeah, yeah, the website is alive. <laughs> um, and the funny thing when we changing when we switched to this new time but we had quite some work because uh, there were some uh, art coded acts um, stuff around and we had to to fix lots of files so we had to prepare um, the new the new design with a uh, with a test with a test host but you, um, thanks to Rhonda, who, who made a lot of this work. So Yes, um, several years ago I stumbled upon the proposal from Carlo Söderman and he had it already in patches, so being a hacker it's quite useful to work with patches, so we are used to work with that and it worked for the website pretty well. Um, I did put it up on a test site, applied the patches, 
And there were some tiny bits that we had to tweak along and to make it really happen we thought we need something better to be able to work on it. So actually what I did was import all the CVS history into a Git repository, which is quite large given with the 100,000 commits from well over, um, I think it's now 14 years or even more. And um, that's quite some history that you have to import. And I updated this uh, CVS import every now and then. We created an extra branch for it in Git and worked explicitly on that branch, merged from the main branch every now and then to have current data. And that way, with the two branches in Git, we managed to prepare the patch for the main website to get it back into CVS. Um, it took us several months to get there, but the surprise went well. People really enjoyed it. When Squeeze was released, we were able to also release the new look of the website, and not, e not even just on W3, DBN.org, but also on the wiki, on the... Um, Lots of services, yes, actually. Some, some other sites, too. So it was quite a lot of work, but it was important to show people that it's possible to get changes into the W3 website, and that the web team is alive, and that we are able to make changes and willing to do so. Yeah, thanks. And when we when we switched it, um, just before we switched it, we um, some of our, some of new contributors arrived, like um, well, like I did actually, and also Francesca Ciceri and Kurt Olsen. I yeah. hope I pronounce it right. <laughs> yeah. Kurt was a quite long-standing uh, translator at that time already. He's working on a Danish translation quite tiredless. Also Tafit was working really hard on the French translation side and I'm very happy that I managed to get them into the webmaster team yeah. for making this happen. And oops. And one of the other recent achievements uh, we mention it because it's a long-standing issue, and I think Simon Payard began to do it, or was one of the person who began to do it, I don't know, five years ago? Around? A few, a few years ago. Ages. It, yes, <laughs> ages. Um, Simon started, uh, Simon is uh, uh, the another of the webmaster of the team, started to make every French pages in UTF-8, because we used to have a charge set for every language. And it began to be quite a headache for the every pages that are available in various languages, with part of English, part of uh, translated data. For example, the internal <coughs> the pages about the localizations. And we finally managed to to finish these last steps, thanks to lots of help from Francesca and Carl, who were um, in contact with many of the uh, translation coordinators. We recently, a few months ago, managed to, to push the uh, last remaining languages to TF8, and it's quite nice because it makes it a lot easier to to add some new pages, new scripts on the website. Uh, you don't have to bother about the various languages, the various char sets that can be used. And uh, what we are trying to do now, uh, among other stuff, but uh, it's a big stuff, is um, to change the license of the website. So. This one, um, there is a bug report from nine years ago. Uh, asked what the OPL license that we use 
we used actually on the website is not compatible with our guidelines, with our own guidelines. So it prevents us to pick part of the data on the website, to put them on our own packages. It was bad. And we are currently on the way to, to ask every contributor of the website to agree with the new license. We agreed every we agreed on on expect or GPL two plus license, and we are uh, Simon did a lot of work about it. We have uh, already 150 contributors among the current 200 that already agreed, and five uh, about. 50s, we are still looking for that doesn't, who doesn't, who don't still answer our mails, but we'll, we'll manage it. Yes, some some people haven't really responded to it. Um, most of them that are out outstanding haven't responded yet. There were no clear objections to it, as far as I know, but I'm not really involved in that process. So, I think it will happen eventually. Yeah, hopefully soon. And uh, thanks to all of us who already replied to us with uh, with uh, the agreement. Anyway, and one of the usual uh, thing we have to do is to maintain the documentation. And thanks to everyone involved. For example, Don in, who is involved in the bug tracking system. Is also updating the bugs part of the website with the BTS documentation. Um, I already mentioned um, Samuel who takes care of the earth port and many, many, many more. I can't sit everyone. And what's next? Well, we're, lots of people are telling us that ah. Oh, I don't want to play with the website, it's an old crappy CVS. We want some brand new Git repository. It's possible. We, that's what we did for the switch to the new design. So there are some things that are possible. There are some bottlenecks. We need to resolve the issue with the translation check, but we already have some ideas. All we, all we need, all we miss, all we need is someone, someone with, with a fair amount of Git knowledge who is able to convince us that submodules would be not a pain for the translators and that it's possible, we need to find a way that it's still possible to just check out the preferred language they want to translate in English next to each other and things like that so they don't have to carry the whole archive some possibilities are there. I'm not sure how it would work with shallow clones. The Git knowledge within the, DB, uh, within the website team is on a base level rather, but I think to make it really happen, you have to have quite a lot of deeper Git knowledge to be able to improve things speed-wise with that big history and that lot of commits so it really works out in the end. We are really looking forward to people that approach us and would help us make this happen and not just people, yes, please move to Git, but uh, yeah, we would want to, but we need some people that are helping us along that way. Yeah. And one thing that is important is we have to keep uh, a workflow simple. Make sure the, um, the step to help us in the website doesn't need to have lots of uh, technical knowledge. We, we are happy in the website. Two of our five webmasters are actually non-uploading Debian developers. And uh, it's quite a huge number because there are only five non-uploading developers currently in Debian. And two of them are working hard on the website. So that's very nice. And we would welcome many other non-uploading developers. So um, those non-uploading developers, some of them are 
You, you want it? Maybe someone with, with gang words? Okay, I hope you hear me. I've been told I don't talk too loud, so just hope you hear me. That's okay. Um, wouldn't that be a good topic for a Google Summer of Code? I know that GSOC is mostly about coding, but I think in this project of moving to Git, there is some coding involved, such yeah. as the translation check and all that kind of things. Yes, um, you're absolutely right. It might be a good idea to get this into Google Summer of Code if we don't manage to find someone by next year, early. Uh, spring. Um, we probably will submit it to Google Summer of Code. Hopefully some will, someone will sign up for that and be interested. Um, it's a great idea. We should pursue it. It's just not the right time of the year currently because it's midterm right now, I think. Yeah. <laughs> we will we would also need to find a tutor. You could do it. Mm, I do that all year, actually. So, nothing new for you. <laughs> uh, it's holidays, summer, oh, come on. Um, yes, and welcome new contributors. Yeah, the, the thing we, um, we could have. And, yeah. and if you want to help, we have actually a pretty uh, long to-do list. Uh, more than 100 and 150 items and counting, so there are work for everyone. There are some teeny ones, some, some that need some script uh, knowledge. Uh, there are also probably quite a lot of duplicates still out there, yeah. which simply could get merged. And um, I think the amount is huge enough to find a lot of bugs that are already fixed since a long time, but no one really noticed. So everyone is encouraged to look at our bugs and also work on them. Yeah. I think uh, almost uh, 50, 50 of them are about the packages that Debian.org uh, front end, which is a little bit different, but some of us know more about it. <laughs> and for those who care, there is actually um, on the bug tracking system, we made it like some packages. Um, and we, we, how do I say that? Yeah, we started to use user tags and user categories to, to categorize the bugs for ourselves to make the overview easier. So we have content related, design related, scripts related, and packages, website related. And some still untagged, but it helps with the overview. And if you just want to work on specific issues, like on the CSS files, style sheets, you can just take a look at the design related Hold bugs. Yes. So, um, okay, I think we're done with the presentation, but we, we, we would welcome some questions, comments, uh, tomatoes, mud, no, well, whatever. I might feel ashamed because you may have mentioned that. Uh, how about the switch to the use of PO files for translation instead of WML? That would be also a very nice improvement. We, uh, we a, a second Google sum of code then? Yeah, maybe we could have two, uh, two students to working on, on that. And actually, uh, if we manage to move to PO file to handle translation, we don't care anymore about the translation check uh, sort of hack we have on the website, and it will it will be a double improvement actually. So only one Google sum of code then. Yeah, maybe. I think it might be 
depending on how we try to approach the things and how we envision how much work it would be, it might need two students, but we have to look at, uh, look at it. There are some concerns, at least from my side, uh, with respect to switching to PO files, um, which I think you are aware of when, when you have read the threads uh, on the W3 mailing lists that popped up every now and then, which I really would like to have addressed. Most, some of them are not strong objections, but I, I care a lot about the website. <laughs> I'm maintaining it since several years now, but um, if I find a convincing argument, I'm all for it. Okay, um, here is another question, but um, I will try to translate. Este, quiero sugerirles este, la creación de unos botones donde el usuario seleccione si le gusta o no le gusta la página y que diga por qué. Um, he wants to suggest that uh, you put some buttons there um, so the user can uh, decide if he likes it or dislikes the website. No, no, don't. Like, like, like Facebook. <laughs> oh, some like it button. Well, I think that is a clear objection from most parts of the web team because it would be playing into a organization that is seen controversial across the developer body in Debian as a whole. Yeah, but tracking, yeah. We, we, we had a, a bit of feather last year about tracking yeah, our users. I, yeah, the, especially, yes, there was just recently, um, uh, one or two years ago, a discussion about having flatter buttons on Planet Debian. And there was brought a policy up that there were quite big concerns about user tracking, who is on who is looking at Planet Deviant because it's including an image from a third party site and code from a third party site, JavaScript code that is run in your browser, which is not coming from Planet Deviant. And with I like it buttons on the Deviant website, it would be even more that. It would be JavaScript coming from Facebook on the Deviant website. And a lot of people will object to that for privacy reasons. Yeah, I think you have two of the two objectors in front of you. Also. Any more questions? Uh, r related with Christian's uh, question about uh, to use. Uh, uh, po files Th there are currently po files in 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 the website uh, for certain things what, what's the limitation to to you to use it for all the website and not just for uh, to, to replace uh, in translations and yeah the places the po files now are used is um, for things like index pages or the navigation which appears on multiple uh, parts of the website, which appears uh, for the data, uh, the dates in front of the security advisories and things like that, which uh, is just a part of the website uh, which gets used multiple times. For the website as whole, I'm, I'm a bit, well, well, I don't know all the PO file translation things, uh, uh, but I'm a bit worried that it might be quite long strings tend to be hard to translate. And if there are only a few words changed within, most PO file translation tools aren't able to cope with that and highlight it properly. The current approach is that we sort of limit uh, the lines to 18 characters and you'll see, and we, we try to convince 
people to not re uh, schedule uh, um, to not move around parts of the, of if it, they just change a word within that they don't rewrap all the lines so that translators see just in this line something has changed and if there's a lengthy strength uh, for a paragraph of about six or seven lines it might be hard to spot the difference but of course that's uh, that's a job for the correct tool uh, the next thing would be to have all the strings next to each other because in some languages you might squeeze some paragraphs together and translate it as a whole thing and not put a break in between it's you might shuffle around paragraphs with lists, uh, put something behind it, things like that. I'm uncertain how they would work with PO files. They are used usually. Yeah. One thing to say also is that uh, PO files currently used on the website, uh, it's a kind of a homemade uh, solution for uh, very specific tasks. So it would be a bad idea to use the same homemade system for all the websites. We, we will need, I think, to start fresh with um, a proper tool, like, for example, PO4A, that, that already has a, um, a proper module to do that, and if, even if it isn't yet, we can improve this module to make it right. Um, the, the, there are solutions that have to be pushed uh, to the end. I would invite Nikolai, who is PO4A maintainer, to approach us and help us with moving forward that part. <laughs> yep. Yeah, right now he's sleeping in Europe, but... <laughs> Any question? Okay. Okay. Uh, thanks Thank everyone. You. Thanks everyone for listening, for for sharing your thought, uh, for staying with us until the end. <laughs> hey, mom. Thanks for being here. <laughs> My first time on TV, maman, c'est moi. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>